Good evening, America. When I stood on this convention stage four years ago, no one fully understood the historic change that was about to take place. We could all feel it. Something was happening. A movement was forming just below the surface. The forgotten man and woman, voiceless in Washington, D.C., were preparing to rise up. Our movement followed the pattern of so many that came before us. First, we were ignored. Then we were laughed at. Then they fought us. And then, together, we won. From that moment forward, America came first. America started winning again. America became respected again. But with every movement, there's a counter movement. In the view of the radical Democrats, America is the source of the world's problems. As a result, they believe the only path forward is to erase history and forget the past. They want to destroy the monuments of our forefathers. They want to disrespect our flag, burn the stars and stripes that represent patriotism and the American dream. They want to disrespect our national anthem by taking a knee while our armed forces lay down their lives every day to protect our freedom. They do not want the Pledge of Allegiance in our schools. Many of them don't want one nation under God. The Democrats want to defund and disrespect our law enforcement. The Democrats want an America where your thoughts and opinions are censored when they do not align with their own. President Reagan said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. It must be fought for and it must be protected. This is the fight that we are in right now, and it is a fight that only my father can win. My father ran not because he needed the job, but because he knew hardworking people across this great country were being left behind. The media mocked these patriots in the flyover states in which they lived. They ignored the Trump flags. They ignored the millions of MAGA banners and barns painted in red, white, and blue. The silent majority had no one fighting for them in either party. Their so-called leaders were bowing to China, bribing Iran, and spending more time worrying about how they'd be received by the elites in Paris than how Americans would provide for their families in Pittsburgh. Our family lost friends, but it only pushed us to fight harder. My father pledged to every American in every city, state, and town that he was going to make America great again. And so began the great American comeback. Almost immediately, taxes were slashed, regulations were cut, and the economy soared to new heights, heights never seen before. Wages went through the roof. Unemployment reached the historic lows, especially for black Americans, Hispanic Americans, and women. Trade deals were ripped up and renegotiated. Lights were turned back on in abandoned factories across our country. Trillions of dollars were repatriated back to the United States which had been sitting in foreign lands for far too long. Once again, America became the envy of the world. And with that renewed strength came leverage. The president demanded that our allies pay their fair share for the defense of the Western world. My father rebuilt the mighty American military, adding new jets, aircraft carriers. He increased wages for our incredible men and women in uniform. He expanded our military defense budget to $721 billion dollars per year. America was no longer weak in the eye of the enemy. The moment President Trump ordered special forces to kill some of the deadliest terrorists on the planet, the day the mighty Moab was dropped on insurgent camps, is the day America took a stance to never be defeated by the enemy. Al-Baghdadi, Soleimani, dead. Over and over, issue after issue, the economy, the wall, the military, trade deals, tax cuts, Supreme Court justices, VA hospitals, prescription drugs, school choice, right to try, moving the embassy to Jerusalem, peace in the Middle East. Never ending wars were finally ended. Promises made and promises for the first time were kept. Most politicians spend their entire careers in Washington, D.C. and get absolutely nothing accomplished. For example, Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a politician who has been in government for 47 years. He's a career politician who's never signed the front of a check and does not know the slightest thing about the American worker or the American business, the engine which fuels the greatest economy the world has ever known. The same politician who has been a total pushover for communist China and someone who would be a giant relief for terrorists who now have spent years running, hiding, and being taken out by the most talented military 
known to man. Joe Biden has pledged to raise your taxes by $4 trillion. 82% of Americans will see their taxes go up significantly. Biden has pledged to stop border wall construction and give amnesty and health care to all illegal immigrants. Biden has pledged to defund the police and take away your cherished Second Amendment. My father, on the other hand, delivered the largest tax cuts in American history, knows if you do not have a border, you do not have a country, and will always support law enforcement and your right to keep and bear arms. Every day, my father fights for the American people, the forgotten man and woman of this country, the ones who embody the American spirit, which is unlike anything else in the world. It built the New York City skyline. It built the Hoover Dam. And soon, under my father's leadership, it will send Americans to Mars. The American spirit can be felt in the majesty of the Grand Canyon, the shadows of Mount Rushmore, and the stillness of the air at Gettysburg. It can be seen in the wide-eyed wonder of every American child as they take their first breath in the greatest country the world has ever known. It defeated fascism, it defeated communism, and in 68 days, it will defeat the empty, oppressive, and radical views of the extreme left. Ronald Reagan's quote ends with this simple warning. One day we could spend our sunset years telling our children what it was once like in the United States where men and women were free. Under President Trump, freedom will never be a thing of the past. That's what a vote for Donald Trump represents. It's a vote for the American spirit, the American dream, and for the American flag. To the law enforcement officer who's being attacked, betrayed, and whose job they are trying to make extinct, my father will fight for you. To all houses of worship and to all people of faith stripped of our religious freedoms and religious liberties, my father will fight for you. To the voiceless, shamed, censored, and canceled, my father will fight for you. To our farmers who work dawn to dust to keep our plates full, my father will fight for you. To every single mother and father, to our veterans, our coal miners, and to the American worker, my father will fight for you. And to every proud American who bleeds red, white, and blue, my father will continue to fight for you. In closing, I'd like to speak directly to my father. I miss working alongside you every single day, but I'm damn proud to be on the front lines of this fight. I'm proud of what you are doing for this country. I'm proud to show my children what their grandfather is fighting for. I'm proud to watch you give them hell. Never stop. Continue to be unapologetic. Keep fighting for what is right. You are making America strong again. You are making America safe again. You are making America proud again. And yes, together with a forgotten man and woman who are finally forgotten no more, you are making America great again. Dad, let's make Uncle Robert very proud this week. Let's go get another four years. I love you very much. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.